Thank you. Uh, okay, a couple things at the top, and then uh, we'll get right at it. Happy Monday, everybody. Uh, on Yemen, uh, the United States uh, condemns the today's suicide bombing claimed by Daesh in Yemen. It left more than 50 people dead and scores more injured. Obviously, we express our condolences to all those affected, to the families of the victims uh, and everyone else affected. Today's attack underscores uh, the urgency of a full and comprehensive settlement that will shrink uh, the political and security vacu vacuum that's been created by the ongoing civil war there. Uh, in the absence of a political solution, we remain concerned. Daesh and Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula will continue to take advantage of the instability and innocent people will regrettably continue to suffer. So last week in Jeddah, I think you all know, the Secretary laid out a path for a full and comprehensive settlement and we urge parties to seize this opportunity and work constructively with the UN Special Envoy as he begins his consultations. Uh, on Crimea, uh, as we have said in the past since he was first taken into custody, uh, we are extremely concerned by the detention of Crimean Tatar leader uh, Ilmi Umerov. We understand that his health condition is now critical and that he remains in a forced psychiatric detention. This tactic of detaining dissidents in psychiatric wards is deeply troubling. We join the international community in calling on the Russian government to release him now. Uh, then uh, on the Secretary's schedule, I think you know uh, today uh, he spent the day in, in Dhaka for his first official visit to Bangladesh. While there he met with the Prime Minister, expressing his condolences on recent terrible attacks there in Bangladesh and discussing our growing cooperation on a broad range of global and bilateral issues. He also met with the, the Foreign Minister to review our partnership on a broad range of issues, including democracy, development, security, and human rights. Following their meeting, the Foreign Minister, Minister Ali, hosted a lunch with key government officials to focus on our growing partnership in regional security and encountering violent extremism. And he met with uh, American and Bangladeshi embassy staff to thank them for their hard work and to express his condolences uh, on the recent tragic loss of two of their colleagues. The Secretary also met with Khalida Zia, the leader of the Bangladesh Nationalist Party. Uh, today, now, or I'm sorry, this evening, he has landed uh, in New Delhi, where he will participate in this year's U.S.-India Str Strategic and Commercial Dialogue. We look forward to providing more details on the dialogue uh, in the next uh, couple of days as events unfold. But it is evening there in New Delhi, so uh, his day starts uh, bright and early tomorrow uh, in that dialogue. So with that, we'll take questions. Arshad? Let me start with uh, Syria. Um, I have seen the tweets that uh, Brett McGurk has put out. Um, what I want to ask you about is the Turkish advance further into Syria and it's uh, operating, the Turkish military now operating in areas uh, where Islamic State is not believed uh, to be uh, present. Um, how concerned are you by the deepening uh, operations, one, and two, uh, why is it that the Assad government is not likely to ultimately be the beneficiary here? Uh, if why is Assad not likely to be a beneficiary if the Turkish military is going after, potentially going after um, your allies, the YPG fighters who have yeah. been so effective against uh, Assad's forces. Well, so the couple of, there's a lot there. Um, obviously, we're closely monitoring these reports, uh, the ones that you've suggested, and of course, uh, you've seen Mr. McGurk's uh, Twitter activity, which confirms all that. Um, so we're watching the, uh, this area south of Drabolus and north of Manbij, where ISIL uh, is no longer located. Um, and the clashes yesterday and those today between Turkish armed forces and some opposition groups and Kurdish units uh, that are affiliated uh, with uh, the, Syria, the Syrian Democratic Forces. These actions were not coordinated with the United States, uh, and we are not providing any support uh, to them. Um, as I think uh, the Pentagon uh, noted yesterday, we're going to remain closely engaged with Turkey and with the SDF, the Syrian Democratic Forces, uh, and other coalition-supported actors on the ground in Syria to facilitate, as best we can, deconfliction. Uh, we call on all the armed actors on the ground to maintain a focus on Daesh, or ISIL as they are otherwise known, which remains a, a lethal and common threat. So 
Uh, we're watching this closely, um, and as we said, uh, as the Pentagon said yesterday, uncoordinated actions like this uh, really aren't uh, getting us further along the path of defeating Daesh in inside Syria. Now, as for the benefit to uh, the, the Assad regime, I mean, he has um, uh, he has taken full advantage of uh, the vacuum that his uh, uh, lack of leadership and governance has. Uh, um, has caused, particularly in the northern part uh, of the country. Now, I don't know if uh, he has a reaction uh, to, to these recent clashes or, or not, um, but uh, we've long said that um, that his lack of legitimacy to govern has allowed Daesh to grow and to fester inside Syria. That, and the secretary has noted that there are, if not deliberate, certainly. Uh, consequential benefits that he has gained from uh, what Daesh has been able to do. So any effort that is taken away from our ability uh, uh, to defeat Daesh is certainly going uh, – uh, is certainly not, not helping the international community. It's not helping the Syrian people. Uh, and it could be perceived by some as a potential benefit uh, to Bashar al-Assad. But, I mean, I, I think, you know, we're two days into this. Uh, I think it's a, a little too soon to, to sort of try to measure, you know, significant – benefits to the regime at this point. But obviously it's not helping us um, as a coalition team and effort to do what we're really designed to do militarily. Well, all of us are dedicated to doing militarily inside Syria, which is go after Daesh. Do you have any influence, do you think, over Turkey and its military actions in Syria, given well, look, that it I didn't mean, even consult you most recently? Turkey's a NATO ally. Um, and Turkey's a member of the coalition to counter Daesh. Um, and in the context of those two multilateral relationships, as well as uh, our bilateral relationship, we certainly routinely have discussions with uh, Turkey about how efforts can be coordinated uh, to go against Daesh uh, inside, uh, inside Syria. I don't know the degree to which uh, there was prior consultation to uh, – uh, to these uh, operations. As I understand it, it, it uh, there wasn't uh, much in the way of any advance notification, but I would defer you to the Pentagon. I thought you said there was none. I thought you said these were all Uncoordinated, un right. Yes. But, but you're asking about coordination is different than consultation or information. Yes. As I understand it, and I would defer you to the Pentagon, but as I understand it, uh, there was very little in the way of advance notification. That's a difference than saying coordination. Right. Um, in any event, um, uh, we are in, as you might expect, given the events of the last two days, we certainly have been in contact with uh, Turkish officials uh, about these actions and, quite frankly, about the concerns we have in, in, uh, uh, in regard to uh, the diminishing of an effect on Daesh uh, and, uh, uh, and efforts to, to try to refocus everybody's uh, activities in, in that regard. Can I ask about another potential beneficiary of this? The, the situation where your one ally is fighting the other when they're both supposed to be fighting ISIL and other terrorists, do you think this helps terrorists? Do I think it helps terrorists? As I said to Arshad, I mean, if the terrorists we're talking about is Daesh, and that's principally the, the terrorist group that, is, uh, that military efforts by the coalition are aimed at, um, uh, these clashes that we've seen over the last two days are not – uh, helping us um, degrade and destroy Daesh as an entity uh, any faster. But the U.S. just uh, just a few more actually on this topic. I figured uh, there'd be a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> on this very topic, yes. Uh, but the U.S. supports uh, Turkey's operations in Syria, doesn't it? We have uh, certainly supported uh, their efforts to contribute to to uh, uh, military activities against Daesh, and with respect to the activities on the Syrian side of the, the border with Turkey, along that 98-kilometer stretch that we've been talking about, that we're, that we're talking about here today, um, uh, yes, uh, the, uh, with respect to their efforts to try to better secure that border from access to terrorist groups like Daesh, uh, we've, been, we've been supportive of, of that as the effort. That just uh, some rebels threatened to advance to Mount Beach. Well, I would also support. say, though, but before yeah. I leave that, because I want to make it clear, we also continue to support the Syrian Democratic Forces, uh, who have been brave and courageous fighters. 
uh, and, uh, and again, I think the Pentagon spoke to this yesterday, but we continue to support their efforts as well to go after Daesh. And they have been effective against Daesh in that part of Syria. Go ahead. Uh, some rebels threatened to advance to Mom Beach. Does the U.S. support that kind of advancement of Turkish slash rebel forces? What we support is an effort to go after Daesh inside Syria. Um, and as part of the broader coalition, Turkey's efforts uh, can have in the past and can continue to be uh, uh, very productive. As well, we continue to support Syrian Democratic Forces, the SDF, as they uh, put pressure on, on Daesh. So if we're talking about efforts on that side of the border and in that area that are designed to better speed the, the defeat of, of Daesh, then obviously we're supportive. These clashes that we're talking about over the last couple of days weren't coordinated with the United States. We are not providing support to them. And as I said, um, we've, we've urged all parties in this regard to refrain from fighting each other and focus their efforts instead on Daesh. That's what we want to see happen. Yeah. Uh, Turkey says it sees 10 villages from Kurdish control in Syria. There are reports of multiple casualties. Are the Syrian Kurds on their own now? Uh, I, the, the, as I said, we continue to support the SDF, and that support's going to continue. Uh, yes, the U.S. had, as you're saying, the U.S. had supported Kurdish fighters, fought with them, trained them. Uh, is Washington now doing anything or going to do anything to protect them from Erdogan, who openly states that one of his objectives in going into Syria is to go after Kurdish fighters whom he considers terrorists? The support to the SDF is going to continue uh, as they continue to press uh, the in fight against from Erdogan as, as they continue to press the fight against Daesh. I'm not going to speak about military hypotheticals one way or another in terms of uh, in, in terms of rules of engagement. What we want to see is that these clashes uh, 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 between uh, the Turkish forces and SDF forces, we want to see that come to a close because that's not advancing the overarching goal that everybody should be focused on, which is Daesh. Uh, Again, we're we're after. engaging we're engaging uh, consistently and regularly with Turkish officials about this about this uh, situation, as we are with our co our counterparts in the SDF. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you can no, I mean go to him and then the, the, the Turkish government from the highest level, including President Erdogan, they have openly supported FSA's attacks on the YPG. Erdogan has said, you know, the the YPG should wait that for the worst to happen to them. And, and the YPG and SDF in general are your effective partner. Do you at least condemn Erdogan's this, Look, this isn't about condemnation. This is about a, a genuine concern that we have, that the effort against Daesh is not being assisted, not being helped, not being advanced by these clashes uh, between uh, the Turkish forces on one hand and, uh, and Syrian Democratic forces on the other. Um, when, when all of us agree, that Daesh is and needs to be the the, uh, the the real enemy to be challenged and to be defeated. Um, and everybody agrees that this is a group that needs to be stopped, including uh, uh, the Turks. Um, and so we're going to continue to consult with all sides to urge uh, the, that the focus be put on Daesh uh, and not one another. So you're not, you're not condemning what the Turks are saying encouraging FSA I'm to not going to make a the, habit of getting up here and force. responding to every bit of rhetoric, as I said, that comes out of Ankara. I'm just not going to do it. We've made our position very clear. The United States has been nothing but consistent about the focus that we want, which is on Daesh, uh, in Iraq and in Syria. And as a member of the coalition and as a NATO ally, we obviously want to, to look for continued cooperation by uh, Turkey toward to, to that end. Uh, and as I said, we also uh, – will support, have supported, will continue to support uh, the SDF in their efforts to go after Daesh. These clashes, um, uh, and, and look, I'm not, I don't want to get into the history of, of, of the animosity and why it's there. I think, I think that's self-evident. Uh, but they're not doing anything. This energy that's being applied to one another isn't doing anything to help us as a, as a coalition team and effort go against Daesh. While the United States is openly telling the Kurdish forces to go to the east of the Euphrates River, otherwise they will not receive U.S. support. That's what Joe Biden said in Turkey. On the other hand, you're not willing to even condemn what the Turks are doing or encouraging the... the, the I, I, I appreciate the effort to rephrase the question in another way. I'm not going to answer it any differently than I have in, in the past. 
Do you get a sense that a separate war is starting within the war in Syria and that by, by supporting Turkey's operations in Syria, the U.S. maybe perhaps unintentionally is supporting the beginning of that separate war within what we're, the war? What we're, okay, so there's a lot there. What we're supporting uh, in terms of Turkey in, intervention in Syria is efforts to go after Daesh and to help preserve that, that section of the border. Uh, it, it, it's not preserve it, but to secure it that section of the border, uh, up near Manbij, that 98 kilometers, um, against the flow of foreign fighters and, uh, and, and terrorist activity, which has long been a problem. We've talked about this many, many times here in this room, and we certainly talked about it with our Turkish counterparts, about the importance of securing that stretch uh, of border, and their intervention in Syria was designed at the outset for that purpose. Uh, and so, yes, we're, are we supportive of that purpose and that effort? Absolutely we are. Uh, as I said, these clashes over the last two days were not coordinated with us, and we aren't supporting them in any way. Um, uh, and then, I'm sorry, you had another question there. Was a, I missed no, there, do, do you get a sense that a separate war oh, is exactly. beginning for, yeah. within uh, the big Look, war I mean, um, the, the effort, the, there's, there's two primary efforts that everybody, we believe, the international community needs to focus on in Syria. One is the fight against Daesh. We've talked about that now over the last 10, 15 minutes of, of the briefing. The other one uh, is, of course, the diplomatic effort to end the civil war. And as the Secretary has said, and we were just in Geneva uh, having a day-long meeting with our Russian counterparts about uh, how to advance towards that goal, um, but as the Secretary has said himself, there are many conflicts that are happening inside Syria. There is the international fight against Daesh. Um, there, uh, there has been tensions between uh, Turkey and Russia. There have been, obviously, there's tensions between Turkey and the Kurds. There's Shia-Sunni tensions. Uh, not every opposition group uh, uh, espouses uh, all the same uh, objectives. Uh, and then you have al-Qaeda in Syria, represented by al-Nusra, uh, that, uh, that continues to pose a significant uh, challenge to our ability to advance a peaceful solution. So there are many conflicts inside uh, the broader war inside uh, in, in Syria, and we're as focused as much as we can uh, on working our way through that. And again, militarily, we believe the focus has got to be on Daesh. There's not going to be a military solution to the civil conflict in Syria, but there can be military solutions applied to that terrorist group. And politically, diplomatically, we're focused on ending the civil war by finding a, a political solution that advances the transitional government structure. That, unfortunately, can't be advanced. Uh, until we can get a meaningful cessation of hostilities applied nationwide. We can get better humanitarian access to more Syrians who are in desperate need. That can't happen until the siege of Aleppo has been lifted. Uh, and again, that's where the Secretary's focus has been over the last several days. With the situation being already complicated, uh, as you described, do you, uh, do you think uh, Turkey's operations are making it even more complicated? As I said earlier, the, these clashes over the last couple of days are, are not helping us advance the, the efforts against Daesh. Okay? You, uh, uh, continue Michelle, to support both Michelle, sides, is that yeah. correct? Most of the headlines uh, in the last two days said that U.S.-backed force in uh, North Syria are fighting each other. Where is the problem here? Uh, it looks like the U.S. is backing two parties fighting each other. Michelle, the support that we've been given to uh, fighters inside Syria has been uh, in the realm of, of, of helping them as they fight Daesh. And so uh, you're talking about a dynamic here that's just developed over the last several days. And, uh, but, the, the, but prior to that, the, were we supporting uh, groups of, of fighters that were going against Daesh in, in Syria? Absolutely we were. And we've talked about that many, many times. And as I I think I answered uh, uh, quite a few times here. We uh, we were in support of efforts by Turkey uh, to help secure that stretch of uh, of the border in Syria. Uh, but these clashes that we've seen are, are not helping us as a coalition advance the efforts against Daesh. And uh, my second question on Syria: uh, After uh, uh, Secretary Kerry and uh, Minister Lavrov uh, meeting on Friday. Is there any update uh, on other meetings that happened during the last uh, 48 or 72 no, hours? No, I don't have any. I don't have any additional updates for you. Um, uh, those uh, meetings occurred, as you know, all day Friday. Um, I, I'm not aware that there was any uh, uh, any follow-up meetings uh, over the course of the weekend. Um, uh, our two teams, uh, technical experts, are supposed to meet 
uh, again very soon in Geneva, but I don't have an update for you. Mm -hmm. And on the Raya, the, uh, the Syrians or uh, the people of, of this village have left uh, on uh, Friday, and uh, they're talking now about uh, Alwar in Homs. The same scenario will, hap will happen in this village. Uh, are you doing anything to prevent uh, the same scenario, uh, the same that I We're doing everything we can to try to find a political solution to this conflict so that the people of so many Syrians, Syrian towns and villages, don't have to leave their homes, don't have to abandon their businesses, don't have to disrupt their lives, um, uh, and either become victims or, or, or refugees. So we're working very hard on that. Again, I mean, the, the, the Secretary has been laser focused on trying to find an end to this civil war to prevent uh, those kinds of conditions for so many millions of, of Syrians. And, and look, a big part of that uh, is, in, in fact, the discussions that we've been having uh, with uh, Russia, who is uh, ha has been supporting uh, the regime, and that's why the Secretary was so engaged uh, in Geneva on Friday, and I fully expect you'll see him continue to stay uh, very, very engaged going forward. Yeah. Okay. The discussions with Russia that have occurred. Who are you? Trey Yanks with One American News. Okay. Um, has Just there been. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm <laughs> nice John Kirby. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you as well. Yeah. Um, have there been. Uh, increased discussions about the use of chemical weapons in uh, the civil war in Syria. We've seen reports this month of napalm-like substances uh, and chlorine being used that sure. have been supported by the Assad regime and the Russians. What sort of conversations have taken place? With we, have, we have raised our concerns about the, the use of, uh, of chemical uh, material as weapons uh, uh, with Russia routinely. I mean, even since, you know, we got the, the vast majority of of chemical materials out of the country. We, we recognize and we know, and I think last week you probably saw OPCW issued a report that confirmed what we'd been long saying, that we believe that at least in the case of chlorine, an industrial agent that has peaceful purposes, uh, the regime have, has used as a, as a weapon of war, which is obviously uh, a violation. And we've been very clear uh, in our conversations with our Russian uh, counterparts about uh, how unacceptable that is and have urged them to use the influence that we know they have on Assad uh, to get those kinds of attacks uh, to cease. Sadly, uh, that hasn't happened. Uh, now, why? I, I couldn't tell you that. Um, uh, but uh, we, uh, nothing has changed about our deep concern about this, and nothing is going to change about our, our deep concern or our efforts to try to get it uh, to stop. More critically, and I'm not saying that I'm not at all diminishing the, the terrible effect that these chemicals can have on people, obviously, but more critically, uh, we've got to get a cessation of hostilities in place around the country so that the Assad regime can't fly those kinds of missions uh, against innocent civilians and drop barrels of chlorine on their own people. Um, uh, but it's, it, it goes even beyond that. We, you know, we want to see all attacks uh, by the regime on the innocent people of Syria and, frankly, on uh, groups that are party to the cessation of hostilities uh, to stop. Okay? Yeah. Iraq? Iraq. Stunned. <laughs> <laughs> okay. T today, a high-level KRG delegation led by the Prime Minister uh, Netravan Barzani visited Baghdad and met with the Iraqi Prime Minister. Yeah. Uh, what is the U.S. view on this, and did the U.S. play any role in trying to solve the problems between Erbil and Baghdad? Well, we're in routine discussions, as you know, with uh, leaders um, uh, from both Erbil and Baghdad. And the Secretary was in uh, Iraq not long ago. He, uh, he, met, with, he met with leaders from, from both sides, as you uh, have rightly asked me about in the past. Certainly, Brett McGurk, whenever he's in the region, uh, makes it a point to talk to both sides. We strongly encourage dialogue uh, between Erbil and Baghdad to try to work out these internal Iraqi uh, issues. Um, and so uh, we're aware of this particular meeting and we're very supportive of them having that kind of a discussion uh, and that kind of conversation to try to work this out between them. Did we set it up? No. Uh, are we supportive of the fact that they, that they did meet? Um, uh, absolutely we are. Did you get any advance notice about it? Did they tell you that we're going to have this meeting? I'm not aware. Uh, we can take that question for you and see if our embassy had any advance uh, knowledge of it. I'm not aware that, that we did. Um, but look, I mean, uh, frankly, I'm not so sure that that's all that important anyway. 
this, the, these issues are Iraqi issues. And sometimes I think we forget, because American forces were in Iraq for so long, that Iraq is a sovereign country. Um, and they should be working these issues out uh, between them, uh, themselves. Uh, and so, uh, so again, we, uh, uh, we're, we're pleased that this discussion happened. We'd like to see more and more of these kinds of conversations happening to try to resolve some of these uh, differences, uh, and we're supportive of that. Whether we knew about it or not, again, I don't, I don't know. Again, I also not really sure how critically important that is that we, that we did. Prime Minister met the ambassador as well. He was ambassador. Do you have a readout of this meeting? I don't. I don't. On the Syrian refugees, uh, the White House has announced today that he fulfilled his promise on bringing uh, 10,000 uh, Syrian refugees to the U.S. Yeah. this afternoon. The, does that mean that uh, in, the, in the months that uh, it rests in the, uh, before the end of the fiscal year, will, well, will yeah, you be able to? We are one month before the end of the fiscal year, my friend. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You said the months. I think there's one. One month? Yeah. Uh, are you able to bring more Syrian refugees? Uh, to? I suspect to you'll see uh, what we think will be a continuation of the pace uh, that we have set thus far. So I would fully anticipate that we will exceed. I mean, you're right. We met the, uh, we will meet the uh, 10,000 figure today. Um, uh, and I would fully expect that you'll uh, see additional uh, Syrian refugees admitted uh, into the United States between now and the end of the fiscal year. How many? I, I, I couldn't predict, but it will be roughly on the same pace that we have achieved over the course uh, of the late spring and summer, which has been about 2,000 per month. But again, I, I couldn't give you an exact figure. When is the decision made on the... To continue that pace until the end of the administration. Is that a new... Does, it, does the same pace remain the, in place until there's a presidential Well, the president has decree? said, you know, he's already said a, a goal of, you know, 85,000 total. Mm -hmm. uh, by the end of this fiscal year, we believe that we're going to be on track to meet that. Um, he has set a goal for fiscal year 17 of 100,000 total. Um, he has not set a specific goal uh, for next fiscal year uh, of Syrian-specific refugees, and I, I certainly wouldn't get ahead of any decisions he may or may not be making, but we... But does he have to make a decision on that, or is it just the current pace stay if no other order is made? Well, again, our, the, the charge has been to, to bring in 10,000 in this fiscal year. We're going to do that. Um, as part of the larger effort to bring in 100,000, the goal of 100,000 in fiscal year 17, um, I think you can reasonably assume that some Syrians will be part of that. Uh, but I'm not, actually, I'm not, it's not that I'm not aware. I know the president hasn't made a decision about exactly how many Syrians will make up that 100,000. But I think, I think if I understand your question correctly, post-October 1st, <clears throat> do, you anticipate, like do we anticipate bringing in additional Syrians? I think, I think yes, as a part of the 100,000 goal that the secretary, I'm sorry, that the president uh, set for fiscal year 17. I just couldn't tell you what, you know, what, whether there'll be a goal specifically set for that. That's really a decision for the president to make, and I, I certainly wouldn't get ahead of that. Is the U.S. government proud of its record in resettling Syrian refugees in the United States since the outbreak of the Syrian civil war in 2011? Um, I, I think the short answer to that question is yes, absolutely. Um, uh, but I'm not sure in, in what way you're, you're well, it's, sort of referring the, to the, that The numbers effort. taken in, and I don't remember them now, I, I, I know I had them at one point, but were quite low for right. a long time. And you mean big, in terms of getting to the 10,000? In terms of, well, in terms of just bringing Syrian refugees in, period. Yeah. Um, and I'm quite cognizant of the effort uh, reached a month early now to bring in the, the 10,000, but there were a number of years where the U.S. was not resettling uh, a whole lot of the Syrian refugees, despite the, the numbers of refugees that have gone to other countries. Obviously, neighboring countries is where they logically It's a little there. different situation no, I know, Europe. Yeah. I know. But, um, and I'm just wondering how, looking back over the last five years, the, the U.S. government feels it's done in terms of addressing this, uh, this problem. So it's a great question, Arshad. I, I, Absolutely, we're proud of the efforts that we have uh, that we have expended to, towards the resettlement issue, particularly with with, uh, with with Syrian refugees. And we've been able to do this while preserving 
um, a very stringent, strict vetting process. In fact, as I, I said before many times, the Syrian refugees are vetted uh, uh, more stringently than any other um, uh, refugee to the United States. Just as critically, and this is a really important point, uh, resettlement is one option, but it is not the ideal option. It's not the best option. And we focused our efforts on these 10,000 on the most vulnerable, uh, uh, the, the ones who are in most need of, of refuge. Uh, and again, uh, uh, the President set a, uh, a pretty high bar with the, uh, with the 10,000. And again, we're proud that we brought them in, but we're equally as dedicated to uh, our efforts to end the Civil War in Syria so that people don't have to flee, so that when this is over, they'll have a home to go back to, whether it's returning to Syria from the United States or from any other country that they've sought refuge in. Uh, that's the goal here, um, uh, because many of these people want to do that. They want to be able to pick up their lives. Uh, they just can't right now. Uh, secondly, uh, we remain the single largest uh, donor to humanitarian assistance uh, for refugees, in, in, specifically in, in the region. Um, and it wasn't long ago that the Secretary announced even more funds for that effort. So um, we, we are and, – and part of the reason that's important is because it's designed to help care for them uh, close to home uh, so that, again, uh, the expectation is that when you can find a peaceful end to the war in Syria, they, they can go home. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Look, we got one more. Go ahead. Real quickly, on uh, Russia and Iran, um, there are reports that Iran has deployed the uh, S-300 advanced um, missile batteries outside the Fordo nuclear plant. I was just curious if you were aware of that and had any comment. And did the um, topic of these advanced weapon sales from Russia to Iran come up in the Secretary's discussions with the uh, Foreign Minister last week? Uh, the focus on the meeting with the Foreign Minister Lavrov and his team yesterday was obviously on uh, – on Syria, they did discuss uh, other issues in the Middle East, Libya, Yemen. Um, uh, they certainly. Um, um, it, yeah, I was going to get there. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, they discussed Ukraine. Uh, I'm not aware that this particular issue uh, came up on Friday. Uh, that said, it, it is an issue that the Secretary has been very clear uh, with Foreign Minister Lavrov about in the past on numerous occasions, that we're concerned about the, uh, the provision of sale to Iran of uh, sophisticated defense capabilities such as this S-300. Now, we've seen the reports of this deployment. Obviously, uh, 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 that's of concern to us because we have long objected to the sale of Iran uh, of these kinds of capabilities. Um, so uh, as, uh, as we get more information, obviously, we're going to stay in close consultation with, with partners going forward. May, may okay. I ask one refugee follow-up? Yeah. So I've just checked the statistics, and, and unless I've got them, got them wrong, which may, maybe I do, um, in FY13, the U.S. government admitted 36 Syrian refugees. In FY14, it admitted just over 100. And in FY15, it admitted – 1,682, uh, and then obviously for FY, you know, for the current fiscal year, it's going to be a big jump. I just want to make sure that you're proud of that record. We're proud of the efforts that we have undertaken to try to bring an end to the war in Syria so that this doesn't, doesn't have to be refugees. The President noted himself when he set the 10,000 goal that obviously we can't slam the door in the face of these of these desperate people. I wasn't suggesting that in any of the given years that, that we couldn't do more. Um, and in fact, we realized we could do more, which is why the President set that goal and why we met it, as you noted yourself, a full month early. And I fully expect we'll exceed that goal before uh, October 1st. Um, but what, 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 we, what we remain dedicated to, um, and I believe the Secretary is proud of, is uh, the, the larger, more comprehensive effort that, that the American people uh, and this government um, has expended on trying to end the war in Syria, trying to degrade and defeat ISIL in Syria, uh, try, and, and trying to provide the kind of humanitarian assistance more than any other country uh, that, can, that can provide for the basic needs of those refugees who are in the region, uh, who are very vulnerable because they're still in the region, but also uh, uh, close to home, uh, in, in the hope that they'll have a home to go back to uh, where they can live safely and securely. Okay. Thank you.